the reason I didn't watch this video whenever the game, whenever I first started playing the game, is because I didn't want this video to change the way that I approach the game. But there's a lot of people with the Monster Hunter community that think that the Clutch Claw actually ruined the game, and they don't like it. I don't know why. That's why I wanted to see it, but I didn't. I didn't want to see. I didn't want to watch it until I had already played the game. Most Hunter expansions are designed to add to the base game. Yeah. They bring in new content like monsters locations as well as new features yeah sure quality of life improvements that can really make the entire game more pleasant to play through as well as substantial gameplay additions that affect the combat in a major way logically for better or worse in this video we will be discussing what is in Ooh, my opinion, I did that. one of the worst gameplay additions i am talking about most hunter wild icebond's clutch claw and how it ruined a perfectly good game really It ruined the game. Most times of combat tends to be pretty grounded. You have your weapon, yeah. your items, your abilities, and you have to use them to take down large beasts. In the first, I actually think that's one of the big reasons why Monster Hunter is successful is because it's very, it's grounded. It's like the tools that the player has access to are relatively realistic. It's not like you can cast spells and shit. Games, the combat was like this with each new entry providing new attacks to every weapon to make them more interesting to use. Most Hunter 4 introduced vertical elements into the mix, Wait, where isn't Hunters that the, isn't that the guy? attacks and mount monsters. Generations at its core reused force Ooh. combat, but added six hunting styles, which dramatically changed the way you approach the combat. Uh -huh. It also added special attacks called Hunter Arts that did a variety of different things. Sure, Four like Ultimate a Gelden Ring. was my Ring. very first game in the series, and Generations Ultimate was my second. I like the combat of both games, but Generations felt like it was too centralized on gimmicks. They were a lot of fun, but I very much preferred 4's more grounded approach. Uh -huh. Upon going back and playing previous entries and later fully replaying 4 Ultimate, I decided that I liked its combat the most out of any game. It's slightly less grounded than say Freedom Unite, but I feel like the vertical elements make the fights feel much more dynamic. It still feels realistic and very reliant on my own weapon and abilities. Furthermore, a dragon. this game added weapon types that I really like, and certain attacks to existing weapons that I really enjoyed okay. using. Most Hunter World was made largely by the development team that made 4 Ultimate, and its combat feels like an evolution. There are no hunting styles or arts in this game, we still have jump attacks, we have new sliding attacks, overall the combat is still nice and grounded. Yeah, I felt like this game, like the combat in this game was really, really, really fucking good. The only thing that I don't like about this game is the weapon sheathing mechanic. I just don't like it. I find it to be very annoying. Other than that, I, I, I really like... The combat is so good. Without a reliance on special gimmicks, yet it still has the dynamic verticality seen in 4 Ultimate that adds yeah. many layers to each hunt. It's great combat that is slightly let down by a boring cast of monsters. World does have one mechanic that I would argue is kind of a gimmick, a small device called the Slinger. Uh -huh. You load it with special ammo and can fire it, causing different effects. Sure. You can distract What's monsters, wrong with that? you can wash mud off certain monsters, you can clear away toxic effluvium, you can load up your flash, oh, really? sonic and dung bombs for easy access, you can even shoot certain parts of the map and cause them to collapse, such as these crystals that fall and deal heavy damage to whoever Yeah, is they knock down a monster. It's an alright mechanic, but it's not something I find myself using after a while. Like, near the beginning of the game, I'm like, Whoa, I can make Rathian walk over there, that's so cool. And then it's something I never really use again. Yes, I can wash the mud off Baroth to do extra damage, or I can just hit him and have the mud come off anyway. It does not help that only the sword and shield could use it unsheathed. There's also criticism to be made about how every single armor piece has this ugly appendage that often doesn't blend in or fit very well. That being said... Uh I, I never really used the slinger because it was just like an extra thing I didn't really want to have to worry about. Yeah, I mean, that was about it. I mean, I thought it had like cool things you could do, but I think having some gimmicks also, I don't think that this slinger is something that's super unrealistic. Like a lot of people used, a I mean, look at David and Goliath, right? I mean, how would David be good at using a sling if he hadn't used it before? Well, what was he using the sling before for? Well, for hunting. So, like, yes, obviously the way that the tool is designed in the game is slightly unrealistic. 
but the functionality of the tool i do think is kind of grounded i mean it's probably like in, in my opinion i think it is on the same level of grounded as the size of this great sword where it's like clearly people didn't use really big great swords like this because they probably weigh 400 pounds however they used really big swords and this is just a an elevation of it right it's like kind of a dramatization of it it's embellishment yeah that praise should be given to the slinger for something that you don't feel forced to use i can completely ignore it and play a world like it's for ultimate but people who master it have access to more options in combat sure yeah this is something that is very important to keep in mind the slinger felt optional generations various hunting styles could be powerful but those who wanted the standard combat could just use guild style. Well, I got news for you with the clutch claw, with the way that I've been playing. Yeah, I got I got a bit of news for you. And in some cases have access to even more combat options than the other styles. Yeah. Making a gimmick optional means that those who dislike it can just ignore it and Ooh, still have a good, a good time. But yeah. those who like it can reap additional benefits. It's that's a very good. difficult balancing act that World achieved with the Slinger. So Icebond gets announced and they start dropping information. <laughs> One of the things they announce is that all the weapons can use the slinger unsheathed. Hooray, great change. Then they announced a new addition, the Clutch Claw, a uh -huh. new expansion of the slinger that allows you to grapple onto monsters. You can use this to either weaken various body parts and make them take more damage, or you can latch onto their head and unload all your slinger ammo into it, causing the monster to go careening into a wall. Yeah, this is the main tool that I see most people using the slinger for. I think people call it like wall bang or something like that, where you make the monster run into the wall and it gets knocked down and enraged. It expands the use of the slinger greatly, and is even available for people in the base game who purchase Iceborn. Yeah. Let's cut to the chase. I think the clutch claw is a terrible addition that ruined the entire game. Wow. Here's why. Okay. Alright. To clutch onto a part of the monster, you first have to aim and press the right face button. With how fast the monsters move, this can be quite difficult, especially when there's a specific part in mind. For example, sometimes I want to clutch onto Brachidios' head, and we'll end up on his arm. The aiming is- I've never had that problem personally. Like, yeah, I mean, for me, I've never had a problem being able to lock on and get onto the part of the monster that I wanted to attack. It's also inconsistent. Despite the reticle being locked onto one Just part, every once in a while, onto whatever like, the yeah, floor makes contact with. I would say every once in a while, yeah, I'll latch on to something I didn't mean to. I think that sometimes happens with like the back and the tail with some monsters, or at least for me. But usually, whenever I latch onto an arm, I go to the arm, and I latch onto the head, I go to the head, and the leg, I go to the leg. Sometimes I'll clutch onto also a be controller, head, yeah. only for them to suddenly turn around as I end up on something I didn't intend to. It's quite clunky to use. When you're clutched onto a monster, uh -huh. you will be thrown off and take damage if they perform an attack. And with how fast ice bomb monsters attack, move around yeah. an attack, this can be pretty common. So until oh, you find a lengthy opening, you'll be dealing less damage than you could. Mm -hmm. There's also some real inconsistencies here. If Barioth's tail touches me during his hip check, I do not take any damage or get knocked back. But if I'm clutched onto his tail, it's as if the full attack hit me. And there's a lot of well, of course that would make sense, because so with the first attack, so you look at the momentum of the attack. I actually think this is a bad example. Now, I think there are instances in which this case is true, but I think this one is a bad example. Because, like, for example, if you're holding on to the back of a car, think about it like this. Think of a car moving really, really, really fast from, like, one position to another position, and it, like, goes really fast, accelerates super fast, but it stops moving in both point A and point B. If you are holding onto the car in point A, and it accelerates really fast to point B, that will hurt you a lot more than if it, if it hits you at the very end of the acceleration because it's going to barely tap you because the acceleration of the, of the beast, Barioth, is slower. Do you see what I'm saying? So I actually think that the physics with the Barioth in this specific example, I think that's totally fine. Because like if you're holding on to something and then it immediately moves away from you, it's going to push you back. Whereas whenever the Barioth's tail is coming at you after the, uh, the hip check, whenever it doesn't hurt you, that means that the acceleration from the hip check has stopped occurring. No, that's not how physics work. I'm pretty sure it is. I'm like 99% sure that I'm right about this. I don't have a real Barioth to test it with, but if I did, I think I could prove this. Cases where this happens. 
So you have to be quick about tenderizing and yeah. finding an opening to perform your clutch claw attack. Each weapon has their own unique attack at varying lengths, and if the monster attacks during them, you will be thrown off. Light weapons like the long sword or sword and shield or light mm -hmm. bowgun have quick animations, while the charged blade, great sword, and other heavy weapons are slower. Yeah. The charged blade attack in particular is annoying because you always end up in axe mode. And combined with the speed of its clutch claw never attack, uses. it led to me never using the weapon in this game. This means that light weapons have a clear advantage, being able to quickly tenderize in and out, while the heavy weapon users are stuck with lengthy animations that are more easily interrupted. There's a clear imbalance. I mean, isn't that something that's the case with just the nature of a heavy weapon versus a light weapon? I, I think it kind of is, right? I mean, like, for example, I can watch a lot of these other videos of people using different weapons, and they just have, like, such a huge advantage in some cases because those weapons they can get in like two hits whenever i can barely get in one tier that the developers were aware of and had a solution for light weapons have to clutch claw attack the same part twice while heavy weapons can just do it once uh -huh. instead of say buffing the heavy weapons to be at less of a disadvantage like giving them faster animations they instead just nerf the light weapons with how fast these monsters move Finding multiple opportunities in a short space of time can be very difficult. I don't think that that's the way that it's intended to be used. I think that like the like it's not really intent the clutch claw. I don't think is really being in it's not intended to be used as like a DPS rotational tool. I think that it's being used as like a strategic enabler. I mean, you can. It is, but not for direct damage. That's what I mean. Yeah, it's like it's not being. You're not supposed to like use it in a rotation of your attacks. You're basically supposed to use it to enable your rotation of attacks to do more damage. That's what I've seen in videos. That's what I've seen a lot of other people do. Like, yeah, it's basically a debuff. Yeah, Colossus Smash. How yeah, annoying great it is example. to aim at a part consistently. It makes tenderizing really unfun. Let's discuss another issue, and that's weapon integration. Some weapons have the ability to combo mm -hmm. into the clutch claw right after attacks. Take the hammer, for instance. After performing charge attacks, they oh. can press the left trigger to instantly clutch onto a monster attacking while swinging in. It's fun to do and allows you more opportunities to clutch. Yeah, it's cool. The Lance has a particularly good counter that combos into the clutch claw, a move so good people missed it when it was absent in the next game. Yeah. However, with weapons like the Longsword, there are no clutch combo attacks. You have to manually stop and aim every time you want to do it, and there's no cool moves to integrate into your combos, which makes finding opportunities rather difficult. It makes the clutch claw feel like an afterthought, I mentioned earlier that it was annoying trying to find opportunities to clutch onto a monster without being thrown off. Okay. But if you use the temporal or rock steady mantles, this will not happen, and you'll be able to clutch and attack freely. The issue here is that both tools are only available in Worlds post game, so you have to go back to the old content to access them. As an MMO player, uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with that, and I think that's cool. But I can see why some people don't like that. Another problem is that because the clutch claw is so reliant on them, other tools are made irrelevant. Uh -huh. Why bring the elemental mantles or the health booster when these two in particular are so much more useful? I've been using the health booster the whole time. I didn't know it was bad. So the designers were aware that clutch clawing and attacking monsters could be quite difficult, and they didn't implement a mechanic to help us out. This is well, the clutch I would claw say that or the clutch I as fans dubbed it. I, I don't know if if it's like, is that really true? Because I feel like there are times that you're able to do the attack. Because like, if you know a monster is doing a certain attack, that will tell you, okay, now I'll have time to like get on the monster and do something. And also like, yeah, I'm trying to think it depends on a monster, right? Like for me, like for Altrion, when can you do the clutch claw attack? To be honest, basically fucking never. Um, but... I would say, like, if, for example, he's going to do the, uh, you know, the lightning, the lightning circles, I think you can grab onto his, uh, his arm and clutch claw him at that point. You can? Well, for, I, I could never fucking figure it out. I kept getting knocked off every time. It's, it, I, and I will say he is probably one of the hardest ones to do the clutch claw on of any of the other ones. He's really hard. When he's bowling ice, yeah. ...into this position where they face to the side allowing you to aim at their parts fairly easily. They uh -huh. hold this position for several seconds, yeah. and will reset the timer if you clutch onto them. Almost every monster in the game does this, and it completely breaks the flow of combat. 
he's got a really good point with this, and I think that he's right. I think the idea that whenever you stagger them, you have to clutch claw onto them, because if you walk over to them by the stagger, the stagger is almost over by then, and so you have to clutch claw on. This is a clearly cringe mechanic, and the game should not function this way. I don't know how to... Sl I, I don't... Like, how would I solve this? I think that the way that... It, I think this is what would make it better, is that the moment that your Clutch Claw... Like, you stop Clutch Clawing off of the monster, even if you don't activate an attack, it ends the stagger. So if you decide to Clutch Claw on and then jump off, the stagger immediately ends anyway. I think that's the only way you could stop something like this from happening. Because it does... It does feel kind of cheesy whenever I see people grab onto the monster and then jump off of the monster in order to just reset a timer. It's a very gamey mechanic. For starters, the monster reels backwards so far that any melee combo you are doing won't hit them. So you exactly. have to stop. If you are performing yeah. a strong multi-hit attack and the first hit claggers them, then you've just wasted it. The monster is now so far away that you either have to sheath and run up to them, wasting valuable time, or clutch onto them, which is what the game wants you to do. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You're basically incentivized to clutch onto them. And I don't think that's a bad idea, but I think that the idea that you're incentivized to clutch onto them and then jump off of them seems very cheesy. The fight completely halts just so the game can go, okay, tenderize now. Base world was also updated so that even if you don't have high spawn and by extension a clutch mm -hmm. claw, the monsters will still do this. It's a really jarring addition for sure, not to mention how unnatural it looks. So those are all I've seen alligators do this in like videos. Alligators do that. The major issues with the clutch yeah. claw. And I'm sure you're thinking at this point, if I don't like it, then I shouldn't use it. And you would be right. I wasn't too big on the slinger True. and I didn't really use it. But the clutch claw is implemented very differently. In the next chapter of the video, I will explain how Iceborn actively punishes you for not using it. And oh, you don't have to explain that. I played it. I know that. How yeah, that I get it. the whole game. How the Clutch Claw is forced upon you. Now personally, I didn't find World all that difficult. To be honest, I thought Rise was more challenging. The reason for this was that World's monsters tend to die really fast. So Iceborne comes along, the master uh -huh. rank expansion featuring much higher difficulty. They also introduced the Clutch Claw, which allows for you to deal higher damage. Yeah. This could make the game easier, could it not? Let's do some maths real quick. The charts displayed show the health of certain monsters in 4 and 4 Ultimate, as well as Rise and Sunbreak. Uh -huh. If you're wondering why Rise and Sunbreak are so absurdly high compared to the other game, it's because we have access to stronger and faster abilities in that game, so all that is taken into account. Okay. This is also only the solo scaling. 4 Ultimate's health pools are also generally lower than average, but are compensated by faster monster speeds and higher attack power. But I'm getting off topic. If you divide the expansion health by the base game health, you can see that Sunbreak multiplied Rise's health by 2.4, and 4 Ultimate multiplied its base game by 1.8, okay. resulting in the numbers you see now. Rather so Sunbreak is the expansion for Rise, and he's, he's basically going to say that the monsters in Iceborne are way too, they have way too much health. Because there is a huge health difference between the monsters in like base world and Iceborne. I've noticed that myself. Up and down respectively. I remember fighting the first one. I was like, health. what the fuck? So let's look at world. These health pools are pretty low across the board, yeah, it's and I like, kind of attribute world's like 15, non difficulty like to them. And if we look at Iceborne's health pools, whoa! A pretty massive increase, wouldn't Holy you say? Holy shit! Doing the math from earlier, this is the biggest increase of all, being over triple world's health. Oh my god! The reason for such an increase is the Clutch Claw. You see, it allows us to deal much more damage to monsters, and the developers probably realized, oh no, the monsters will die fast like they did in world. So they cranked up the monster's health to compensate, not only this, but they nerfed monster hit zones so that they take even less damage. By this point- Ah, uh, I mean, is that the only reason why they did it? I don't know if that's the only reason why they did it. Because playing through the baseline game, I don't think there is that many, like, really hard bosses in Monster Hunter World. Like, there's some of them that have, like, complex and difficult mechanics, but for the most part, I think a lot of them are actually just pretty fucking easy. I should probably mention the Warbangs. They deal roughly and also, like, I'm not sure the way the expansion mechanics work in the other games, but, like, in Monster Hunter uh, World, like, Iceborne is, like, an entirely different tier of gear. So, like, whenever you're looking at the health pool increase, you're looking at the health pool increase, 
without taking into account the fact that players are also doing way more damage. Just on a baseline, they are doing way, way, way more damage. Sunbreak is the same. You think so? 2% of the monster's total health and damage. They do massive Yeah, because like now that I have all my master rank gear, I don't really feel like there's a big difference between me fighting a high rank Teostra whenever I was high rank and me fighting a master rank Te Teostra whenever I'm master rank. I feel like it's basically the same thing, except for the numbers are bigger. Break damage, and they knock down the monster on top of that. It's free damage everywhere. You nope. can only do it when the monster is not enraged. Yeah. And this means that if you play optimally, monsters spend half the fight on the floor and the other half absolutely furious. Do you see why they increase the health so much now? If you actively use the clutch claw the way it's intended, mm -hmm. your hunts will last normal lengths. If you refuse to use it though, they can often end up much longer. You see, the tenderizing and the damage dealt through warbangs adds up, and I find that hunts can take over 25 minutes, which was never the case in the base game. I want to remind you all that World it was, was for me. Clutch Claw free, and you didn't have to use a slinger. If you did, it gave you an advantage, but not a huge one. I now think, like, for example, against Kushal Adora, the, the flash pods. I think you can do, like, you can put flash pods in your, your clutch claw. I think that's a huge advantage. I'm going to be honest. I, I, I think it is. Now, you basically have to use the clutch claw to get the results you used to. I should also mention that the clutch claw is available to and use the in the base game. Whatever. And if you do use it, then it basically destroys the monsters, since they clearly weren't designed with it in mind. Another problem from this is that because the claw was available in the world from the start, and breaks the game a little bit, People who start playing might get the impression that, like the Slinger, it's a neat little bonus that they can use occasionally, but overall they can get by just fine without it, and True. they would be right. True. Right. But once they hit Icebawn, the tool becomes necessary True. in nope. order to achieve the same hunt times they could in well. Just keep the hitting The entire them. game changes. Hit them more. And because the tool is horrible to use, it's for the no. worst. The armor skill weakness exploit was also nerfed, so that a monster part has to be tenderized for you to receive the full effect. This also applies to the base game, which punishes people who didn't buy Icebawn. I also just hate- That's kind of a good point. I think this one is actually kind of a good point that he's saying. Hate yeah. the effect it has on the fight. When the monster isn't tenderized, you know that every single hit isn't as damaging as it could be. When the monster goes down in every other game, the natural instinct would be mm -hmm. to start beating them up. But in Icebawn, you would look around for the tenderized parts, and if there were none, you'd waste the opportunity by tenderizing instead. I'm not a person who speedruns, or cares about getting optimal damage. I uh -huh. don't even make mix sets. The fact of the matter is that it's not fun to be aware that you're not using your full abilities to do maximum damage. But on the other hand, using the mechanic isn't really fun either. And the worst part was, World's Combat did not need fixing. I do think that using the Clutch Claw is really fun. I think that so... For example, this is one thing that I think is really cool about using it, is like whenever you're fighting a monster and it's running away, and you can clutch claw onto it as it's running away, holding onto it while it's running away, and then attack it, and then, like, sometimes I can roll out of the attack and do it two or three times, I do feel like I'm doing something really cool. Like, that to me feels cool, or like holding onto a flying monster whenever it's flying away. That's, I, I like that. I'll be real. I do or changing like this. It was great and probably my favourite combat in the series, since it's an evolution of 4 Ultimates combat. All the game needed was higher difficulty and better monsters, which Iceborne provided. Yeah. It actually gave weapons some pretty cool additions. The universal ability to use a slinger and shift was good, but some weapons also got useful combos, like the greatsword being able to skip to mm -hmm. the true charge slash by firing a slinger burst. That stuff was cool, and it was all that was Yeah, re by the way, I don't like that. I think that's cheesy gameplay. I do. I'm, I'm going to be honest. I, I think it's it's cheese. What is the slinger burst to accelerate it? Agree? You think so? Why? The reason why I think so is that it's clearly... So, okay, this is going to go... I'm, I'm going to step back for a minute. I'm going to talk about why I really like Monster Hunter. I really like Monster Hunter because it makes sense. Most things in the game make sense. Like, you know, fire, ice damage, contradict. Yeah, no. So, uh, yeah, it, it, that's basically one of the big reasons. Like, you hit the head, it knocks them down more often than if you hit their side. You hit their tail a lot, it cuts off their tail. 
you can use the environment, you can trap the monsters, and like you feel like you're in a real environment rather than just like, let's say, oh, I'm just playing this video game against this boss. It adds to the immersion of the game. And I think breaking the, like, the, for example, like if you break, I think one of the horns off of the electric anginath that can't do certain electric attacks, stuff like that. Uh, you can break the fangs of the Toby Kawashi, I think, the Viper one, so it doesn't poison you anymore, except for like that one attack. And like all of those different tools that you have in Monster Hunter make sense on a very base level that is intuitive for somebody who's never played the game to understand. And I think, to me, that Rathian's tail, yeah, you break off Rathian's tail, and it can't poison you anymore with the tail. Why? Because there's no fucking tail anymore. It's that simple. So I really like that a lot about Monster Hunter, because it makes a player feel smart for being, being able to intuit things that would make sense in real life. And personally, I think that's a great thing. It's one of my favorite things about the game. So with the, sling the point that I'm making with that is that the Slinger Burst, there is no logical reason why a Slinger Burst would make you do a true charge slash faster. Like, it, it, there's, no, there's no way you could intuit that in the same way that there's no way that you could intuit that the Clutch Claw would reset the stagger time. I'm not saying that, like, I hate it. I'm not saying the game is bad. Obviously, I don't fucking think that it's bad. It just doesn't logically make sense that you can Slinger Burst and skip an entire attack. I, I, I don't think that makes sense. There's no logical reason why you're swinging around a uh, massive greatsword. It's fantasy. Well, as I mentioned earlier, I actually do think that's the case. So there is no logical reason why you're swinging around a giant greatsword. Yes, absolutely true. But this is a this is a dramatization of real life. People did use large weapons like a Zweihander or a Claymore or something like that. Now, were they as big as this? No, they weren't. But it is uh, it is fantasized. Whereas this is just simply something totally irrational. It doesn't really make sense. We needed. Iceborne then proceeded to utterly ruin the combat with the claw, and that honestly just stings. The game was so close to being perfect for me, and then they just messed it up forever. You can't even play the base game without being reminded of the claw. And also, just by the way, I know there's some people that like are disagreeing with this. I don't think this is an opinion that you can have. I don't think this is a wrong or right opinion. This is just like my opinion based off of the game. And these are like, this is like my value system for the game. I'm not saying everybody who disagrees with me is wrong, but like, this is why I don't like it. There it is, right? This must have still do the it's my clagger. preference. It's just permanently tarnished. And that's the logic. No it. other Must Hunter game received such a huge addition that completely changed the combat like this with the expansion. And it actually made me worried for the future. My biggest hope for Stunbreak was not more monsters or more difficulty. No. My hope was that they wouldn't ruin a perfectly good combat system Jesus. with a needless addition again. So I've discussed why the Clutch Claw sucked and how it ruined I spawn for me. In the next chapter of the video, I am going to discuss the wire bugs and how they avoided the Clutch Claw's mistakes. Jesus. The Wirebug is a movement and combat tool introduced in Most Hunter Rise. Uh -huh. It's basically a grappling hook that lets you swing from anything, including the air itself. Oh, cool. Hunters can also use Wirebugs for certain attacks, known as silk binds. In general, there are huge parts of this game. So how well, do and they also like Rise is much more of an arcade like high fantasy version of Monster Hunter, right? Whereas like World is supposed to be much more grounded. Yeah. Yeah, and so I think that this makes more sense based off of the foundation. Avoid the problems the Clutch Claw had. Well, the wire bugs are much better integrated into the hunter's movesets, with three different buttons the hunters can swing up, forwards, or in any direction mm -hmm. they desire. And once you get the hang of it, traversing the maps can be really fun. But the wire bugs are also really nicely integrated into the weapons. With the Clutch Claw, you had 14 different weapons all trying to perform one specific action in one specific way, and some were better at it than others. Some even had more options than the rest. Yeah. With Rise, every weapon has two silk binds at once, and each can be used by pressing the left trigger and the face buttons. Some are used for high damaging attacks, some are used for mobility, some are used to buff your weapon, and some are used for both. These silk binds are custom designed for every weapon, and this makes them fun to use, since they mostly have meaningful effects. 
They're the spiritual successor of hunter arts, essentially. Now here's the second reason, which is related to why the Clutch Claw was such a poor addition. Rise was designed with the Wirebugs in mind. The game's locales were designed around them. Yeah. When designing each weapon, they were also designing their silkbind attacks and how they functioned. Most of all, they could also design the game's difficulty around it, which is why Rise's health pulls were so much higher than Worlds. Earlier, I criticised Iceborne for making the Clutch Claw more or less mandatory. Now, arguably, the Wirebugs are mandatory in the same way, where if you don't use them, you're not dealing anywhere near optimal damage, sure. and your hunts will take a lot longer. Yeah, I don't have an issue this time. The reason for this is that the Wirebugs are integral to Rise's identity. They were a part of the game from the very beginning. If somebody doesn't like using them, they'll know that perhaps the game isn't for them. But if they do like them, they'll most likely enjoy the whole game and its expansion. I don't know about this one. Yeah, I'm not sure, because, like, I mean, for me, I think that using the Slinger and the Clutch Claw is kind of annoying. Because, like, I mean, I'm playing a Greatsword. What do I want to do whenever I play a Greatsword? I want to hit things in the head with the Greatsword. So I just don't really use it a lot. Now, it would be better if I did, but, like, unless I have to, I just don't really do it. If you recall, I really liked World's Combat for what it was. It was simply you, your weapon, and your abilities. Exactly, yeah. Plus the Slinger if you felt like using it. I spawn changed it by forcing the Clutch Claw on the weapon. Me, and now suddenly the whole game is centered around tenderizing and warbangs in order to deal good damage. That's I did remember, like, I talked to Tecton about this, and Tecton was, like, explaining to me, like, his opening rotation. And he's like, yeah, dude. So, like, basically I go in and I drop a trap on them, and then, like, they're stunned. And then, like, I hit them with the hammer again, and then they're fucking stunned. And then after that stun, I get on them, and I do I wall bang them into the wall. They're stunned again. Now they're stunned. I'm hitting them in the head. After I hit them in the head again, they get up from a stun. They're stunned again. They enrage. I dodge the enrages. After the enrage, guess what happens? Clutch claw again, wall bang them, they're stunned. I'm hitting them in the head. After that, I knock him again in the head, and then it stuns him because I've been hitting him in the head so much. And then he's dead. Yeah, the hammer's awesome, man. It's badass. And it's like... Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, that's not really exactly what I did, you know? Clutch call would have been fine if it was just wall bangs and no tenderizing. I mean, the wall bangs are, are very integral. They're very important. Changing the combat flow massively. I think it's kind of obvious the worse. With Rise, I liked the wirebugs from the beginning, mm -hmm. so them feeling mandatory wasn't an issue yeah. because I like using them and I had a good time. If you look at World and Icebond together as a complete experience, World lies to you by saying you don't actually need the Clutch Claw, only for Icebond to pull the rug from underneath. Rise is honest to you about the wirebugs from the very beginning. I don't agree with this. I don't agree with this point because I think that like as a game comes out and there's like more tools in the game. Like, I don't think it's really a lie for you to say that, yeah, well, you don't need the Clutch Claw in World, number one. I know that because I did World. I didn't really hardly use it at all. And it was fine. But also, like, I don't think it's unreasonable or a bad thing that, like, a expansion adds in a new tool. But I do think that he, he does bring up a good point that whenever the tool contrives the rest of the gameplay around it, that it can be frustrating for some people. The biggest issues with Rise were the weapon balance, with some being way too strong partly due to their silk binds, and Wyvern riding basically being mandatory. Sunbreak fixed the weapon balance issues with nerfs and buffs where needed, mm -hmm. and made Wyvern riding optional. I think I fought this one. Sunbreak did introduce a new tool that drastically changed the combat in the form the of the switch skill swap, but this doesn't change the flow of combat, nor did they literally need to rebalance the entire game around it. To be honest, you don't even need to use it. All it does is allow hunters to switch playstyles and allow for greater combat possibilities. There's no concern about it breaking the base game either, because it only unlocks when you're in Master Rank. I believe most of the issues with the Clutch Claw are a result of it being introduced in Icebond. If it was designed for World, they could have made it fit better with the rest of the game. They could have integrated it more with weapons and changed the monster's function to incorporate it better. With an expansion, they could have rebalanced it further. Icebond's final update doubled the tenderized time from 90 seconds to 180, and introduced a decoration that allowed light weapons to tenderize in one hit. Good additions that slightly fix the mechanic, but are ultimately too little too late. I have zero doubt that if World received another expansion on top of Icebond, it would have rebalanced the clutch claw so that like the slinger in the base game, it would have been a nice bonus and not something you had to do. The 
I, I don't like, I mean, and this is like kind of weird because like I'm always the kind of person who doesn't use this kind of stuff. But like to me, I never really had a problem with the clutch claw at all. I thought it was fine. Lesson here is that huge mechanics like this yeah. should not be introduced in expansions. Especially if they change the combat to such a degree that the base game has to be rebalanced to account for them. I think that's probably true and like that's a good point. That like obviously adding in this massive new tool does make the game way fucking easier. And I think that there are games that are like, you know, in the past have had something like this happen before. Furthermore, I don't think the main sure. series team should try these huge experimental additions. They should focus on making raw, grounded combat yeah, power that's creep, not basically. relying on gimmicks yeah. while incorporating the best parts of the portable team's experimentation. Mm -hmm. I say that because it's exactly what World did. The combat is largely grounded, but several of the new weapon attacks are taken right from generations, rebalanced and retooled to work with this combat, yeah. and it makes them really fun to play. The next game should have World's combat, but maybe with Ryze's switch skill system, that would be really good. The title of the video is how the Clutch Claw ruined Iceborne. And so you're probably thinking, did it really make the game bad? This one edition? When playing a Monster Hunter game, for me, the two most important things are the quality of the monsters in the game and how fun the combat yeah, is. Yeah, sure, that's about that's it. That's not to say that other things don't matter like the story, pacing, or end games, but the main point is that if a game can't pass those two simple checks, then I won't this enjoy is, playing it. This is Every a combat game. If the combat in the game is bad, the game is bad. It is that simple. It's not about the story, it's not about the world, it's not about the graphics, it's about the combat. Combat is good, the game is good, combat is bad, the game is bad. Everything else is secondary. In the case of 4 Ultimate, Generations, Portable 3rd, I like the combat and I like the monsters. So those games are good. I like World's combat, but I find the monsters rather boring. There isn't much variety, and a lot of them fight in the exact same way there's only three that I would consider to be memorable. Now, if we look at Iceborne... Uh... Uh... I don't have a frame of reference to talk about that, really. I mean, like, because I've only played one game. Like, yeah, I, I don't know. The monsters are good, with some great returning monsters and some genuinely cool subspecies uh -huh. of world monsters that I found boring. The originals are also really creative, but because the act of fighting them is unfun, it tarnishes the whole experience. I enjoy fighting- I think Velkana's a good boss. I do, I, I think Velkana's a very good boss. Dinoga, Brute Tigrex, Velkana or Bambaro. I do not enjoy fighting them with the Clutch Claw playing such a huge role, and because combat is such a huge part of Monster Hunter, it does ruin the whole game for me. I like Sunbreak significantly more than Iceborne, but without the Clutch Claw, the situation would be similar to Four and Generations, where I consider the one to be better than the other, just slightly. I still think I'd like Sunbreak more overall, because Iceborne has a lot of problems that Sunbreak doesn't have, but that's better than me just outright disliking the game. Yeah, and I mean also like he's clearly talking about like his per his opinion about the game, like, for me, I think that he does bring up some pretty good points about this. Like, for example, adding in something during the expansion that's available for the whole game does power creep the game and changes the way that new players interface with content. And I think that it could also set them up kind of for, like, failure later on whenever it's like you're playing basically with a handicap by having this. And then by the time that you finish the game, now you're no longer playing with this handicap. So, like, not only is the game harder, but also you don't have the handicap. So, like, yeah, I think that's a good point. And he brings up a number of good points with this. But overall, yeah, I, I really think that the game was fine uh, with this. I mean, I didn't really bother. It didn't really bother me a whole lot. The Clutch Claw ruined Monster World in several ways. It took some of the best combat oh. we've had in the series, over-centralized it around a poorly implemented gimmick, and therefore changed the entire game for the worse. Some of you might be wondering, Iceborne is a bit old, why make a video now? The answer is that I made a few digs at the Clutch Claw in my underwater combat video where I compared two bad mechanics with each mm -hmm. other. Some commenters were curious as to why it was bad, and I've wanted to talk about this in detail for a while now, particularly why the wire bugs are better. I'm sure some of you might suggest trying out the Iceborne Community Edition mod, 
since it reportedly does rebalance the clutch claw to be something of a bonus, rather than mandatory. At the moment, I'm not really interested, but maybe in the future. That'll be all for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Do you dislike the clutch claw? Or better yet, do you actually like it? Let me know why in the comments, because either way I do want to know your thoughts. Remember to like and subscribe, and have a good day. I think there are two very, very, very good points in this video. I think that the clagger mechanic is fucking garbage. It's a game mechanic, and it's clearly an exploit. It shouldn't exist. Number two, I, I don't, I, and this is my opinion, I think that the clutch claw, the slinger burst, TCS combo is bullshit. I, I think it's also, I don't think it's intended. I, I don't, I don't think it's intended. Maybe I'm an idiot. But I don't think it's intended. But I, I feel like the clagger mechanic, that's the one where it's like, yeah, like, why the fuck should it work that way? Why is it bullshit when you can use tackle to do the same thing? Um, because, okay, so, no, no, no. Uh, I, I think that, I think you bring up a good point. And I'll explain where I think the difference is. So, with tackle, the mechanic is being used for the exact reason that it exists. Tackle is used, there's a reason why it gives you hyper armor, and it is intended to be used in that way, versus whenever the clutch claw, you have the TCS acceleration, I don't think that it's intended to work that way, because it's part of, it's basically an unintended interaction between two mechanics. Does that make sense? So like, well, with the clutch claw, and like being able to like, uh, sorry, uh, with ta tackle, like, tackle is one mechanic, no. So you think that it's slinger burst versus tackle? Yeah. So with tackle, tackle is functioning the way that tackle functions. And I think with slinger burst, slinger burst is functioning the way that it's functioning, but also you have the... Uh, so I'm, I'm explaining this in such a bad way. Uh, basically, one of them is an ability working in the way that it's intended, and the other one are two abilities working in ways that they are not intended. It's an unintended interaction versus an intended direct interaction. Does that make sense? I don't know. Am I crazy? Yeah, I, I see the TCS thing, and I feel like the TCS slinger burst acceleration feels like an exploit. I, I do. I, I think it does. Sure, it feels that way to you, but it was intended. You, you think that it was intended that you can use the slinger burst to skip an entire attack in, like, your greatsword combo? You think so? I mean, here's the thing, right? Is like, if it was intended, here's the truth. If it was intended, then I'm wrong. I just don't think it was because it doesn't really make sense to me. But yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, it, it feels, it feels really gimmicky. It's intended because you look at the possible move set of the upper right portion of your screen. Literally in the combo list of the move set. It's intended, yes, but it doesn't feel like a great sword move. Yeah, I guess that's I, I guess that's the best way to say it. Yeah, I mean, fuck. Maybe I'm wrong about this. Maybe that's the case. Maybe, maybe I am wrong about this, but I still feel like it seems cheesy. And I'm sorry, like I do. I I really think it feels like it's cheesy. Yeah, that's fine. I do, and like, yeah, you guys bring up some good points. You do, but. Man, it just doesn't... It's like, why would, why would this happen, right? It doesn't make sense to me.